Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we have a hot new product to the uh, store, Matty Boy. Yes. The Gen 3 Telemade P790. You know, Gen 3, in my opinion, sometimes can be a gamble for a mm. company to, to continue with a series. And, you know, they can talk about your continued performance and this and that, but some people are ready for a change. Um, Could be, yeah. And, and, you know, when we see these, Aesthetically, not much has changed. Yeah, I think they're a little sleeker looking. Yep. I like the satin kind of finish on there, not surprisingly, as it is something that I'm um, partial to. They look a bit slimmer though. Like I think they look a little bit more the way people would like. Mm -hmm. uh, I just took a look at most of them at a dress. The top line still obviously is a little bit generous, but I, I, think, boxy. I think versus the second generation, I think most people would look at these and think, okay, mm -hmm. they do look a little bit trimmed down. And, and that's that's the outside, that's the, the shell. Yeah. And looking at that. There are some changes to the inside though. And, mm. and I think that's what we're obviously here to do is to explain that and to test that and to maybe show some of the people who were doubting whether there was a need for a Gen 3, that actually there, there is some good reason to upgrade some of the things that were right. internally built into the DNA of a P790. Obviously, since the first edition, it has been a home run, it's been mm. a hit. I think a leader in class when it comes to this kind of, um, you know, distance, player's distance yeah, iron. Yeah, hollow body this, irons. Uh, hollow body player's distance. I think it probably has been the leader in class. I think that's fair to say. Um, so, yeah, some, some upgrades in, in terms of the, uh, the construction and the, the insides of it mm. that, that we're going to talk about. Awesome. So, speed foam is, is no more. Well, it's not no more. It's no longer called just speed foam. Okay. Speed foam air is, mm. uh, is the new sort of, uh, the, the new internal sort of part, of the, the head that's going to allow them to free up some weight. Okay. So we, when we saw the injected speed foam before, we saw that kind of orange, you know, yep. we saw the cut out with the orange kind of um, material inside there. Now that is 69% lighter okay. than so the predecessor. Save some weight that they can move around a little bit. Correct. So the idea being, yeah, and that, that's always what it comes down to. Discretionary weight to put it where you want it. Um, they've managed to save a few grams. I mean, 69% is a high number. What does that equate to in grams? It's in about, foam. Yeah, it's, it's a few grams. <laughs> yeah. You know, it allows them to pull the, uh, the, the weight a little bit lower, deepen uh, that CG. Okay. Launch it up a little bit. So still got, you know, strong lofts. Right. In the kind of long and mid irons. One thing I will say about this is just touching lofts. It doesn't have the, the strongest short irons. Okay. You know, 45 degree pitching wedges, the same as a ZX7. I was just gonna say, that's not strong at all. It's not really strong. By modern standards. But what they do is they separate their, their uh, short irons by five degrees, whereas other companies separate them by four. Right. So that's where they get to the stronger loss. By the time you get to a six iron at 26 and a half, that's pretty strong. Gotcha. And right. that's because people's lofts tend to, or their distances tend to bunch up as the set goes down. Yeah. Yeah. So really that's, that's the, the kind of the, you know, the, the main difference. We do have a new, uh, a new construction to the, the shell mm. of the club. Um, we, we have a slightly thinner uh, face producing a little bit more ball speed. We've got an expanded sweet spot. So mm. more forgiven, uh, going to launch a little higher. We'll see if there's any more ball speed coming out of them if you get a little bit more distance. Definitely. Um, and, and, and overall what they offer. Okay, so we're gonna start, we've got a pitching wedge, we're gonna hit some eight irons for the short iron, then yep. we've got the six iron for the longer test. And then on the six iron, we are gonna test the six iron versus last year's six iron. Do a little head to head there, yeah. just to see if we see anything uh, in, in kind of the numbers and the performance uh, that we can sort of talk to. So not expecting anything spectacular from the wedges in no. terms of, you know, distance. distance or anything like that. I mean, 140 is your number. You've hit that bang on the nose, 140. Hit that a bit better. Maybe a couple yards longer. Yep. That was nice. Yeah, it feels pretty nice. Really nice. So, nice sound. It does have a nice sound. Yeah. We're using Pro V1, so there's uh, on the softer side. I think it's a nice uh, combination. Yeah, really good. Yeah, it's a nice flight. Easy to hit. Very easy to hit. 
Okay, um, so 140 right in our number. So we're delighted to see that because that's exactly where we expect you to be with a wedge, really with any club. Yeah. 138 to 140, you know, within a couple of yards. So it was by, by no means is it, is it jumping off the face. Nope. Uh, we just done some, some tests and a ball test with your pitching wedge. The, uh, the ball speed average with your pitching wedge, which is one degree weaker, uh, was about 105, 106. Right. right. So I mean, there's, there's a, a little jump purely by, well, the loft and, and also a little bit in the tech. Yes. But nothing, nothing that's going to... Uh, really upset you. And a nice amount of spin there. Yeah. I mean, we've seen some low spin irons in the past get under 8,000. Mm -hmm. um, so I think 8,000 above you generally say is a nice pitching wedge for spin. Happy enough with uh, with those numbers for sure. Okay. Um, the sound was, was uh I liked was good. it. Yeah, yeah, it really did. Yep, we'll have to see how it is once the face gets a little bit less loft on it. But I mean, it, is it as soft as a, uh, you know, a forge blade? Obviously not. Yeah. But it, quite a pleasing sound and feel, I thought. Yeah, agreed. I mean, and they're, they're using that 8620 carbon steel, uh, quite soft. Something, again, that's, as they set progresses, you know, this doesn't have the slot technology. That's right. So, you know, you will get different acoustics from the, you know, the, the gap wedge, pitch and wedge, and eight iron, nine iron, eight iron. Mm. Um, then but, once you get into the, the you know, the, the six through to three, Right. you might start to see or hear some different things based on a little bit more face contribution, but more gotcha. face flex. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll look out for that yeah. at that point. Okay, let's pop into the eight. Beautiful. Silky smooth. Right on what we'd expect. Mm. Didn't exactly uh, flush that, but yeah, and, I and thought I flushed it to be honest until yeah. I saw the, the picture. And this is part of the story, isn't it? With yeah. these irons, yeah, it sounded like you flushed it. Yeah, I would have guessed you flushed it. You probably would have guessed you flushed it. Yet yeah, you've strayed 11 millimeters mm. to the toe side. That's great. It's it's validation for for the type of player who needs to use an iron like this. Totally. Another one. I'm going to guess that was closer to center, but we'll see. It's just actually a little bit thin, but it was a good strike. We huh. always look at this, don't we? Uh, yeah. How much of the numbers shifting around? You've hit that in a completely different spot in the head. Yes. So one was, one was kind of on the equator toe side. Yeah. One was uh, flush with the uh, vertical, but it was, it was obviously low. You've been separated by one foot, uh, <laughs> one yard, <laughs> barely any spin, and less than half a degree. That's really cool. That's really cool. I mean, you're looking for the punchline with these, it's consistency. That is it in a nutshell. Lovely. It's nice. Lovely. It looks like it's just a very high flight that gets the distance very easily. That's what I'm feeling. Yeah. I don't feel like I'm swinging very fast, mm -hmm. but the ball's just flying plenty high, like probably over 110 feet. I think this is a good looking eight iron too. So again, I think people, if you're gonna be a person that picks on top line thickness, you probably aren't in this category anyway. Mm -hmm. I think for the person that's looking for the forgiveness, this is quite, it's quite a sleek looking yeah. head. Like it doesn't look big. The um, blade length yeah. to me, it may be the finish this year but it just looks a little bit more compact. It's a good point. I mean, I think if you, uh, if you put it against others uh, in its class, maybe like an Apex. Yeah. It's no, it's no bigger than an Apex. No, not even close. By top line, you know, it's, uh, you know, th those types of irons, it definitely isn't, isn't chunkier or bigger or, or more offensive in any which way. Not at all. Uh, than that, so. Okay, we'll try the six. Sixes. Expecting this to be a nice, comfortable, kind of mid 190s. Mm. And hoping to see that apex stay. That's going to be the key for this one for right. me. Um, is our, you know, can we retain that 110? So we're there 113 feet with the wedge, 113 feet with the eight iron. Right. Can we keep the six iron? You know, call it above 110. Got it. I felt really nice. That's nice. Honestly, it doesn't feel too much different than the eight iron. Like I was expecting it to all of a sudden feel kind of clicky, but mm -hmm. still quite a nice sound. 
Nice, man. That one felt really Good nice. Sweat. I can tell it's got less spin, but I, it still looks like it's flying pretty high to me. Mm -hmm. That really feels good. That felt really, really good. I don't remember super in detail the first time we tested P790s, but every time I've hit them or we did the follow-up, I can always remember kind of the same punchline for me is with not a ton of effort, I can really put a lot of distance on the irons. It's got tons of height on it. It doesn't look like it has any trouble stopping. No. Well, if we look at the three of them, actually in the, in the end, six was the highest That's of them cool. all. So ball speed sent it ball up there. Ball speed was the primary. And that's where, you know, that's where manufacturers want consumers to focus a little less on spin. Yeah. No one's going to argue that a less lofted club will spin less. Of that's course. not the argument. But with elevation via launch and, and ball speed, pulling that CG down. I mean, everything about this head has been to try and thin out the walls, mm. add more weight down low, um, 31 grams of tungsten out in the toe, deepening the, the CG, allowing it to launch a little bit higher. That's, that's exactly what they're, they're looking for. Yeah. You know, here's why you're probably not the target market here is because you've separated your eight iron and six iron by 35 yards. Yeah, then it becomes a bit tricky with the seven yeah. in there. So then you, yeah. you start going, okay, we've got to get some serious gaps in here. So, you know, not, not ideal for you. You'd probably need to soften this one, uh, you know, a couple of degrees or something like that to That's back true. that back down. And it would probably require a little bit of customization. That's yeah. fair enough. Golf ball wise as well, you're playing Pro V1, not Pro V1X. We could get more spin out of a golf ball that, that you know, contributed to that good stuff um okay let's do this little head to head yeah we last year's. spoke about with uh last year's okay edition that's got to be pretty good yep mm. that's a good one that was a good one yeah. Okay, so the kind of head-to-head -head test um, showed a little bit of a, a difference. Mm, definitely. Some stuff to talk about and talk about what's relevant and what's not, though. Uh, I think let's start here so we can, we can talk about that. There was a slight height difference in the strikes. You did hit the, the 790 uh, 2019 version a little higher. That's where the spin loss is, is coming from. Gotcha. Right, so you're going to get a little less ball speed and a little, a little uh, less spin higher in the head. Um, that's where the two drop-offs really lie in there. Mm. Uh, retaining a decent amount of launch, again, that's from the tilt off uh, the, the strike above the CG. You, you actually hit the, the 790, uh, the new one, in, in the perfect spot. You know, catching that right there is, yeah. is ideal because you get a little bit of the ball riding up the face. You get the face to flex a little bit more. That's the whole idea of that speed pocket. Okay. You get a bit more contribution on ball speed, which is why we were up at just about 136. And, and we get you know more speed, more spin, better launch, and then you kind of get the separation and apex. Interesting. Everything in which we would want. So you know that equates to about 11 feet and you know, two and a half degrees on, on a uh, land angle. Interesting. So, I mean, someone would need to go, if they had current P790s, yeah. go in for the fit and the demo and see if you hit the new ones on the same exact kind of strike mm -hmm. point or if the way they've, you know, if, if they've reconfigured the weight, yeah. it's possible that that has an influence on how I've delivered it. Yeah. Go in and see. You may hit them exactly the same, no. but I think the experience of hitting them is definitely a little bit different. The mm. old one is still obviously a very good iron, yeah, yeah. but it might be worth just a demo to see. Maybe you, you strike them a bit differently. Maybe you get a bit more height, a bit more spin. It's worth, mm -hmm. a, worth a shot. Yeah, and it's probably a good test as well to show that the, the low players who are probably scratching for a bit more spin, how easy it is to drop into a range that yep. gets a little bit dicey. Definitely. Uh, you know, you cook one maybe out the rough and you retain some ball speed and you... Maybe it's a dewy morning, you lose mm. 600 RPMs of spin. 
that 41 goes to 35. It's gone. It's, it's gone, so it's flat. It's coming. It's went from coming in at 45 degrees to coming in at 40 degrees. Yes. Your chances of holding the green are zero. True. Um, you know, those are the subtleties of, of managing these new uh, kind of players' distance irons. Definitely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But we're, we're pleased with uh, with the new additions, aren't we? I am, yeah. I think, personally, I, I do think just the looks-wise, they've they've made enough improvements there. Now, would I spend the money to replace them if I had last year's? Yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think I unless need to you do, saw the numbers. Right? Yeah, you'd have to go demo them, see the numbers, but I think they've done a nice improvement. And that's, mm -hmm. as you said, I think the revolutionary one was the first P790, Definitely. and they've been refining it ever since. So for the person who is looking at them, has never owned a set, I think they'll really like these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. true enough, true enough. It might... You might just not have been ready at the time. You might yeah. have bought a set of irons just before the first generation came out, and you know you look a look at the second ones and went, "Well, I like them now, but you know this might be the time." Yeah. Because I think Gen One, Gen Two, Gen Three. If we were to say which one we like the most, it is Gen Three. Yes. That, that's 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 an easy one for us. I to think say. it's an easy one. Is it by miles and miles? Maybe not, yeah. but it is improved, and I think that would be the one to get yeah. for sure. Yeah. yeah. And and you know I think we can. We can show some numbers that, that support our mm. sort of, uh, you know, our thoughts on that. Definitely, yeah. Okay, um, looking through the spec sheet there, it is always nice to see uh, for our lefty friends, full complement from three to gap Ooh, wedge. Lovely. That isn't always the case. No, usually um, you lose out on the gap wedge. Sometimes you lose out on, on, on either, three. you know, one of the, they maybe do four to wedge or something and you lose out on one of those. So good. Uh, it's, it looks like if, you know, whatever's offered in righty is offered in lefty, which is always good. Love to see it. Um, and again, guys, you know, these are, these are unique products and we're talking about spin rates and, and you know, performance got to get fitted for them mm -hmm. you know the the shaft that we're testing is the stock shaft it might work for some of you but go go and sample some of the other shafts out there see if there's one that gives you a little bit more performance turn those screws you know get those little extra percentage points here and there that just dial in your irons that much more uh, we can't recommend that highly enough rather than just going picking a set off the shelf yeah you have to do it yeah yeah Good stuff. Okay, uh, we've got some new wedges to try as well. We've got some MG3 wedges uh, that are in the, the pipeline. We actually have them here, so you'll see some more testing with those. A nice clean looking wedge, and they we'll look see great. the numbers uh, if that support the, the good looks. Stay tuned for that. We'll see you again soon.